again. So hello, welcome in this breakout room where we go um, again on Omero figure. Um, and it's called for beginners because this is uh, meant to basically uh, be a buffer zone for people who have um, no previous experience with Omero or Omero figure. And uh, then maybe the workshop uh, which was just happening was too fast for you. And or you would like to go in some more details in the user interface, which is uh, not what is happening in the other breakout room where Will Moore is going into some scripting. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, um, pointing you in the chat to the document where you can pick up your users, usernames and password if you didn't so already. And I will go a little bit slower and then you please feel free to interrupt me if you want me to go to some uh, depth. Uh, however, of course, we will have anyway quite a short time for this. So, um, just not to repeat too much what uh, Will was, uh, did already do. I, for myself, I picked user 24 and um, I'm logging in into, into the server. And um, what Will was showing in, in the demo was the data which are under a different server. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I will go again. Um, I have picked user 24 so that you can continue with your experience. Yes, that's the server. So one thing to mention uh, probably is that this these servers, uh, I just uh, I just made a small mistake, but you can you can calmly ignore it. You can just imagine that I really just logged in and I landed here, and my name here is Jennifer, uh, and I have a surname as well. This is a name of a famous scientist, and yourself, you will have such name as well, a different name, of course, because you have a different user number. And the, um, the way how to navigate to each other's data is via, uh, via this menu. And uh, this is basically the cooperation aspect of Omero. So if I navigate to trainer one's data, just like if I wasn't there already, um, then I'm getting to the data which, which Will was showing in his nice workshop. Yes, okay. And it says uh, idea 0079, okay. And where he started is this data set. Then he was showing the images from this data set. Now, uh, what we typically do in a more basic workshops is to start with this data set with some other uh, more simple images and show, uh, I think, two features which which uh, were not there uh, with Will. Um, I mean, this is a repeat. So he did some Omero parade, of course. I, I will do just a selection by <clears throat> rating first, where I have three images which were, um, which were um, rated previously. And then I just open them in Omero figure. Okay. And I have a multi channel, a multi Z section images there in between of them as well. Now, the point to emphasize here is how quickly actually this can be done in Omero figure, how quickly you can create a new figure. And uh, I'm just snapping them to grid and putting them, putting them. in this classical shape. Uh, 
the confusion which sometimes happens if you get to a metal figure is that you don't know which copy is copying what. So you get here and then you think what to do. Well, always the copy paste is like the bread and butter and what <clears throat> we use for shortcuts typically uh, on a keyboard is on a Windows machine is control C for copy and control V for paste. And that's what, it, what goes there all the time. Uh, when, when Will was saying, for example, and I will undo the changes, I will go back. You can go back by two means. You can undo under edit, undo, or you can go and do control Z. So if I do control Z, you can see that it un undid my uh, shift of the panel to, on to, to the top. And I can also zoom in into the figure here. And then classically, what he was doing as well, he selected the channels uh, for the columns, like so. So that is uh, that is also fine. Yeah, so I, this is the first, and I will leave the merge as it is only. I will switch all the channels on, okay. Now for the um multi z uh, figures which is this one actually where i picked the image so this is the image let's say if you if you navigate to this link then you can precisely copy what i'm doing i just pasted it in the chat i think this will give you all the three images and then you can open them in a matter of figure you have the exactly the same thing what you have here uh, now is uh, basically a basic layout of the figure uh, with the channels and now you want to add labels and typically you would add labels on the top um, for describing of the columns and there is a um, uh, useful widget here where you can harvest the data metadata from Omero directly using just the names of the metadata such as channels. So I just say channels and that's it and it will know which and the names of the channels are on those images in Omero and it will add them for me. I don't even have to worry about color. I just make them a little bit bigger and I will put them on the on the top so that they appear here and it will be quite colorful as you see. And like that, I have all the channel names there in one click and it's more sensible um, than uh, adding them one by one, of course. And then on, the, uh, on this axis, I would like to describe let's say from which uh, mitotic phase are those images coming because I have them on the, uh, I have them uh, inside the metadata and there are tags describing that. So if I, let's say tags, I can add tags uh, to uh, left vertical. Okay. And if I do so, and you can see that uh, because they, these images were pre-tagged, I have them on the. Um, I have them on uh, the vertical column, uh, describing the each of the rows of this uh, future figure. Uh, now, and in this easy manner, I can simply go and uh, finish creation of the figure such as adding the scale bar in the bottom right image as is, as is usual. And I can zoom into the figure by using the, the bar here on the bottom left, okay? Now, having done that, and then maybe omitting the crop, yes? Could you just show the rotating the... Um... Absolutely, yeah. That's why that's why we are here. So let's go let's go through the rotating options. So um, first of all, you might combine the rotating with zoom. Okay, so the zoom bar is here, uh, and my aim is now to level up this uh, um, this piece of DNA so that it's uh, horizontal. Okay, 
So I, I um, maybe let's start with the rotation so that I don't make too many mistakes. Although Omero figure is so nice that you that it's mistake permissive. That's that's its beauty. So the rotation is hidden on the uh, top left of the preview panel. It's it's like the snake biting in its own tail sign, and you have to drop that down, and it drops down a. Um, um, uh, a slider which is perpendicular to the ground. And if you slide that slider, it rotates the, the panel. Now, I probably want to also center it a little bit first after the rotation so that I am targeting, as I said, this piece of DNA, and then I zoom it in. So like so, okay, I think that's that's quite that's quite acceptable. So that was a rotation and zooming and panning in one. Okay, and now I have this this as an insert. Okay, is it is that answer answer your question or? Um, it was very cool, but actually I was talking about the um, the anaphase and metaphase labels. Um, ah, how to rotate the labels? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. The answer is unfortunately very simple, uh, and it's it's no, uh, you can't do it. Okay. So you don't rotate such labels. And the uh, only way you can uh, specify the position of the labels is described here, okay? If it's not here, it's not ex in existence, as easy as that. Uh, okay, so what you, can do. you use left vertical in that case. Yes, I, I use left vertical, but I cannot, I cannot then say it would be cool if it would be under angle of uh, 75 degrees or 45, yeah. That's fine, I was just, uh, mine were uh, horizontal and like- Yes, yes. Now it's there are, Thank you. Yeah, not at all. The one thing to remember here is exactly, this is the problem with uh, two speedy uh, demo uh, is that there are two sections of those, um, of those positions and the top uh, section is basically describing position inside the panel. So if I would, let's say, say uh, um, top left, then you see that the label just popped into, into the panel, yeah? which might very well go wrong according to the coloring. Yeah. And uh, uh, yes, and but uh, maybe it's also worth. Maybe we can, we cannot know. We we have anyway so little time that let's let's better show the feature which I think is missing. I, I'm not sure that Will was really showing that. And this is the question. Well, I know I know this. This is almost finished now. Yeah, I I know how to zoom rotate. We we went through that in painful detail. I can also scroll through Z or make a projection, which is a very nice. Very nice feature. This is the pancake uh, like uh, pancake like icon. I can make a projection of all those Z planes. That's fine. That's all fine. So I'm very happy with with my figure. But I need a very different imaging modality entities here. I need a super resolution uh, microscopy images which are not from the data set. And I didn't add them in the first go. Logically, I didn't because I didn't think about that. So how do I add new images to a figure um, which are not there now? So you would think, okay, I can go here and my new images uh, are let's say here. So I select a couple of them. Well, yes, that's fine. And then you would think, okay, I'll go here. I, I say open with Omero figure, but that would open a new Omero figure with them. That's not what I want now. I want to add those three images into the existing figure, which I'm creating here. So I do it by clicking on this chain icon. If I click on that chain icon, I copy uh, with control C on my keyboard, the link, which is inside here, then go back to the Omero figure. And then I will say add images. So this is this is this button over here, and then I paste what I have in my um, in my cache, and this paste this this link to those three images of the super resolution microscopy. And I add those images; they are being added on top of my figure, which is exactly what I wanted. So in this manner, you can add new uh, items into your figure very much post hoc. Uh, which is very probably what you will be forced to do by by the flow of life. Yeah, 
um, so to say. And um, I can arrange them and this yields itself better to uh, also to show the feature of uh, of zoom in a, in a much better light like so. So I, let's say, have again this, the good old layout, which I already described here and which will also, they, 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 he did much more fancy layout. We, he, he's, he resized the panels and so, but this is, this is basic, of course. And, but I see that the centrios, which are here in the middle of the panel, are simply too small. So if I zoom in, I can now zoom in in all the panels, so in all three figures, and then uh, I can now adjust the row separately. So I, I selected only the top row now before I was selecting all three rows, and I can select, uh, adjust them separately because that would be not fitting. I would not manage to adjust them really uh, all the same. The offset of the centrioles from the center is different in all three of those images. And now I can do my channels again, let's say um, I could, but now I see now I see that uh, I selected slightly incompatible channel numbers. This image probably has different channels. Uh, that's fine. Um, I will still select blue in this one. This one I will have to live with the green here because that's that's the color of the channel. I can still change the color, of course. Uh, this will be green for this one and uh, red for this one. Okay, so I'm selecting the top two because the top two rows match each other with the number of channels and their colors and their, num and their names. The, the third image doesn't, uh, which, is, which is life. Yeah, that's, that's how life come, can play, um, like so. And this will be a merge of all channels on, that's fine, okay. And then I can go and zoom in a little bit and then go again with the labels uh, because uh, they are um, they are hyper important. That's the point where you're harvesting the data, basic metadata. Uh, now here, I would maybe like to start with the scale bar because that's not the easy one. If I now say show, you see that this was what Will was describing. These images are very small, these are subcellular structures. So I better even hide the scale bar than say, okay, probably nanometers are more appropriate here. And uh, this is too small. So I know that 100 nanometers is much better, but it's still not, it's still not it. So what if I go for 500 nanometers? That's that's quite acceptable. Okay, so this is this is how to work with too small a scale bar. Sometimes people report, oh, the scale bar doesn't work because it, that didn't show up, but it's just because it's so small. And, uh, and then I can, of course, again do the channels on the top as I did before. That's fine. And add. And you see now I uh, can rectify the mistake very easily. Best is to remove those channels. And I did a wrong, uh, I, there is a um, left vertical from the last addition of my labels from the last time, okay, as a default. So I say uh, top, top, okay. And the channels are being added to the top. Very good. Now, uh, on the left, I have something in uh, data set names. Uh, sometimes that's encoded as well. So I add the data set names on left vertical. There will be the names of the proteins for which uh, it was stained. Okay, so that's that's fine as well. So that's how I can combine the the two panels. And you saw in this complex figure, which Will was showing, if I save it, uh, we know already from the previous workshop, this is the basic one. So this is a basic figure. Okay, the names pops up here and I can export it. This was, this was done by Will. But if I open now uh, the figure, which is, uh, which is now saved, I can now go to owner and show somebody else. Could you tell me your your name? I mean, your name by your name, I mean 
for example, I am here, Jennifer something. If you go to the Omero web, you can say, okay, I'm something else, but it doesn't matter. So I, in this way, um, I think this is user 40 here. Okay, and it has, um, yeah, and it has uh, some figure here. So that's how I can see the figures of my colleagues. Okay, so I could find your figures there as well if I knew your names, of course. Um, and uh, I have also, maybe as a last step, if you don't have questions, just interrupt me with questions, okay? As a last step, because very soon we will be kicked out. Uh, I will show again this figure of uh, my colleague trainer two, which I think Will was showing already. Okay. And to, to really point out two features which we are quite proud of. And this is that figure does support big images. This is 100,000 by 50,000 pixel image. And this is an insert of it. Okay, so if I select it and go into preview, that's really big. I mean, I can uh, zoom into that. You can see that it, uh, it will think about it for a second and it shows me the better resolution here. Yeah. Is it possible also, if I'm in um, the path viewer, to save a view and then use that in the figure in that way, if that makes sense? Um, yes, if you are somewhere else, though, um, the only way how you do that is something like this. I, I, use, I use said the word path viewer, where I am quite weak in. Uh, you would have to ask Erin Deal or, or um, you know, Chris, Chris Alan, which had the demo. You would have to do a workflow, which is a little bit cumbersome. You need that image as a image in Omero. Okay. So I am now in Omero iViewer. I would do something. You might imagine what, you know, this is my view and I add my Roy here. Okay. And, and something, something. So exactly that view, you just, you, you are not, I, I don't have even pass viewer here, yeah? Uh, so excuse me, but um, you would probably have something like that, okay? And I said, that's my new image. So the best you would do here in Omero iView, you would save the, this as a PNG, but this went locally here. And then I would have to do a, an import step and import this image as a, new image into Omero, and then I would have it somewhere here in a data set. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you can do that, but uh, you saw that I didn't uh, attempt to sell it as the best workflow in the world because it's not, what is what is missing there is the step of make, make that viewport a new image in Omero immediately. Actually, we have that feature in, in Omero figure though. You can ha you have this, uh, you can say new Omero image in, in a figure and you can save this as a new Omero image, but that's not the way you were asking. You were asking the other way. You were saying, let's go from some other Omero app, create quickly a new image, and that image should then be added to figure. But thank you for that. The, the, the super common question we have, as Will was showing, he was starting with parade. And this is, this is really like already boring question for us. If you go to Omero parade, and you open it all and you have the you have some uh, you have some uh, parameters here okay and you do the graph from them and then you select and you say and now we go to omero figure of course people will ask immediately how can i get this whole graph as an image in omero figure okay but that's not possible because this is actually a fault of uh, all the time 